We're just going to talk a little bit about uh, Alan Andrews, who was another uh, probably forgotten chartist, I guess. Uh, a lot of the, there's so much new stuff out now that, you know, some of the old techniques are, are kind of forgotten. Um, Andrew's pitchfork is pretty basic. What we look for, we need to have something like this initially. And what we want to do is take this space here, find the 50% level of it, okay? Then we go back to this last low, and we just draw a straight line through here. And that, according to theory, projects potential supported resistance. Probably should have. Uh, next, we just draw a parallel to that. Uh, generally, the theory is about if, if we get through here and we can close through the median line, about 80% of the time it should get back up to the, uh, to the top of the channel. Now these are really quick too. Most software will do this for you now. I know Supercharts does it. I use Aspen as well. It does it. it it's pretty quick. Um, so again, here we've got you know, your two points, and you just find your 50% level. You go back to down here, and you just draw your straight line through, and then your parallel channels. Now, when I'm drawing this line here, for me, there is some discretion in where I started. For instance, if I've got a, if, if this looks like it's got, it's going to join a trend line that's got three other points down there, but I don't have to draw it right on the low. You know, sometimes I'll draw it to the close or something like that. It, so in other words, I'll try to make this line fit the pa past data, right? Thinking that if that symmetry is holding in the past, it probably has a good chance of, or a better chance of, uh, of holding in the future. So I said there is some discretion that I will use with this. You know, stop me if I'm not making something clear. Um, well, yeah, it, it was support. I, y yes, obviously it was support here. Generally, generally on something like this, your first thing is, if it's gotten through here, if it's closed above here, like I said, 80% of the time it's going to get to the top of the channel. Okay, so that's your number one rule. If you can get through the median line, then you're probably going to get to the top. Um, yeah, yeah, more, more so, yeah. I mean, initially, it's resistance. All right, and you can even see on the intraday basis here, you know, we got up here and we came back, I don't know, five or six cents or so, but once we got through it, it didn't take us long to get to the top. But, you know, by itself, if this is just coming along here, by itself, no, but I think, in fact, I've got some more bean charts, and just by coincidence, you're going to see that there's some other things I've got here that, that were also supporting it there. And uh, so, yeah, as part of a, a com, you know, total package of things that, that, that may be showing support around the 690 level, if I've got like four or five or six different indicators that say there's, you know, support there, then that's certainly, that's going to certainly help my case that I think there's support there for sure. Yep. I don't think so. Uh, I, there are some things that I have that I think work better. Um, just to go back to the square nine, that's a, yeah, it's an excellent question because in the square nine, especially in the first technique I showed you, it doesn't really work that well in the financials. It's much better in the grains and the uh, exotics and the softs and so forth. It doesn't really work in the financials. Um, that's the first GAN technique. The second one works pretty well in everything. Uh, but this one is you know, pretty, it, how do anybody uses this anymore? You know, this is really old. What would be your exit strategy once you got up above the uh, pitchfork here? Well, you know what, then you've then you got to go back and start drawing higher time frame pitchforks. What I would probably do is, okay, I can see, okay, I'm out of this smaller time frame pitchfork, so let's go back and, and maybe draw one from here to here, okay? Find my midpoint, which may be in here, and, you know, draw my line through here, and then, you know, my parallel may be up here somewhere. Okay, so you've got to go. You've got to go back and, and get into a higher time frame. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's just you know I don't think you can.
trade the Andrews pitchfork personally. Maybe some people can, just by itself. But again, my, my approach is, and you'll see this more as we go, and it's especially illustrated in that little book that you can, you know, you'll get a chance to read later, is, you know, if I've got six different things that are support here, then it's then it's support. But if I've got one, it doesn't mean anything to me. Okay. Okay. So, oops. Okay, it's kid proof. Here we go. All right. You know, same thing here. It's candlestick chart. You know, same thing here. Find the midpoint of these two, right here. Boom. You know, we've got support coming in. Okay. You know, the fact if it had have broken through this channel, we would have expected it to go down here, but obviously, uh, it helped. That was actually a trade that we did in our market letter. I think we'll get to that a little bit later. And here's something that is sort of a sidelight. All right, I want to dwell too much on this one. In fact, this is almost this is a little bit uh, a little bit borrowed. There's basically here's our original two points. Okay, here's our 50 percent level of those, and there's our, our middle line that we talked about before. What I've also done here is gone through the Fibonacci levels of 38% and 62% and, and drawn my lines from there. If anyone's interested in this, there's a whole software package that's available um, called DGLs, which um, I think a lot of people really swear by. and It draws all these different lines for you, and, and, and if you get convergence of lines from different time frames. For instance, you know, you've got, you know, maybe one of these three lines here and then you're doing this one and it also has three or four lines. And you get them all coming in here, three or four different lines. It's, I know some people really swear by the methodology. If you go on the internet and you search under uh, uh, DGLs or uh, GAN lines, you could probably find some information on that. Um, but basically, again, all we've done is, it's really just a, a small extension of the Andrews lines. And really, I just brought that to your attention in case anyone's interested in it. If you've got TradeStation or, or Supercharts, I know there's a program that you can do, and it really does it for you automatically. And if you get uh, convergence, it looks to be pretty good. Now, here's actually something that I like even a little better. The principle of the, uh, the pitchfork is, I guess, you know, find my midpoint here and then sort of project. What this technique more does is, is deal with what you already have. So I've got point A is a given and point B is a given. The market's already here by now. So I'm, instead, of, instead of finding the midpoint here, okay, what I'm actually doing is saying, you know, where did it go instead of where do I think it will go? And I join that low to this high and project that out. You know, <laughs> interestingly, here we are. Um, that's the same place the, uh, you know, the top of the pitchfork came down in the last chart. We've got the same soybean chart up here. Again, so here we got, uh, you know, we've got this high. We're joining to what we already know. We're up here someplace when we draw this line. Instead of figuring the 50% area and, and, and shoving it through, what we're doing is saying we know A, we know B. That already represents some market symmetry. Uh, let's see if that market symmetry continues, and we extend the line out. Okay? Well, because it, up here, we're, we're already... We're right here when I draw the line. Okay, so we we've established that B is a low. Okay, so instead of instead of again, you know, taking the the 50 percent of this and, and then you know figuring that that's probably a pretty good ratio, what we're doing is saying, okay, we have A, and we have we know that's where it stopped. So, you know, we're up here now. Let's just join those two points. Do you see the difference between the the pitchfork and the and the actual? Okay, um, a low at 10.1 and a high at 10.13. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's just, you really need like a, uh, you need a up, down, up or a down, up, up, okay? So we could have, we could have, it would have been perfectly valid to say go through here, 
Okay, if we're right here, right there, we could have joined A and made this point B, and, and maybe that would even work. I don't know. Let's have a look. Anything coming in there? You know, if we had to draw on that line, okay, and you can see that's not quite accurate, but it's coming up here again, okay? Okay, that's one I really like. The pitchfork, the pitchfork says, wow, 50% is a pretty good ratio. Let's try that and project it. This one says, here's what the market symmetry already is. And, and sometimes the market does move in straight line symmetry, okay? Here's what it already is. Let's see if it continues. Okay? And just because it gets broken, and this is important, just because it gets broken here, don't stop the line. Keep the lines live. Okay? Um, I've seen markets, and you especially see it in the ags and the meats and stuff. I've seen markets hit these lines, and sometimes they'll break them. Okay? But they'll go you know, 10, 12 times, and this line is live almost all the time. You know, it might get through it, but then it might come back up to it three different times. Keep the lines live. 